Wolfman here at thecombatsystem.com. Today I'm going to show you all the possible main defenses uh, to avoiding a headlock, a head and arm throw, uh, both standing and the transitions into the ground fight um, that you'll find yourself in, both for street self-defense, for MMA, and for grappling. Uh, I hope you guys will enjoy it. There's different levels through the steps of the headlock. Uh, looking at self-defense, you want to sense the attack and defeat it right away, not get there in the first place. What's the best defense to a triangle choke? Don't get put in one in the first place. The same thing goes for a headlock, the same thing goes for everything. Um, so we're going to look at the different points that I can defend it and different ways of doing it. There's seven uh, defenses with a couple variations. Okay, so no number one is if this guy comes to put me in a headlock, I'm going to not get there in the first place. Go ahead. I'm going to not get there in the first place. Okay, and headlocks happen a lot on the street because we start duking it out, right? And then I hit him with a big right hand and his instinct is to come back. So this is why a lot of times it's going to happen in a street fight situation, self-defense situation. And grappling, he's going to look to push me in the cage and get that head and arm throw. Look how successful Ronda Rousey's been with uh, the head and arm throw. And, um, you know, she usually does a 1-1-2, one, one, gets tagged, and then comes in with that left arm around the head. People haven't thought about not getting there in the first place. They're worried about the arm bar. You're not going to outgrab with someone who's been doing that her whole life, okay? Um, they should focus about not getting in the position in the first place. Anyway, so when he comes for the headlock, I'm going to weave it over my head to begin with. And I do that with the Russian-style martial arts arm roll, which also works well at the right distance against overhand punches, by the way. So he comes in here, I'm going to not let him get there in the first place. Uh, and if you uh, come again, here, slow, boom, I roll it over, and then boom, I can go, and I have him potentially. Potentially, if it's still there. If not, great. Um, I'd say from a fighting perspective, and you come in on the headlock, yeah, and come in on the headlock, that's okay, here, and then I'm here, and then I'm here, knee on belly, or arm bar, or whatever. You'll see me use that head and arm through a lot, I have another video on that. Um, and the second way, uh, so that's the first way, is rolling, rolling that elbow up and basically popping it over your head. And you want to try and get to the wrist and find control. That could go uh, simply to a knee, it can go into this head and arm throw, it can go to an underhook. Um, it's a follow-up, okay? Whatever comes out of it. Secondly, is if he gets it, is instead of just going down and letting a guy coming in hard on the headlock, keep a strong structure strong spinal structure and all the fighting I teach MMA or whatever, keep a strong spine. He comes in and, and before he breaks my structure down, I know, the second best thing I can do is intercept it right away. So as he's coming around, I'm going to lock him out here, keep a strong neck, strong posture and try and get him focus the energy down. Now, if it's just a bouncer situation, I can walk this guy out, okay? Maybe give him a quick knee once we get out the door. If it's a self-defense situation, I might give him a pop-up here, and it's really bad because I give him this hard hit on the way up to the head, to the knee strike. Now, using my head and neck as a fulcrum, I can do this head and arm spin as well. Control him here, or go arm lock right away if you want, whatever. Um, so I'll show that again. As he comes over, maybe I messed up. Maybe we're doing MMA. Maybe we're doing MMA, he got me against the cage, and he's coming in for it. Now, before, I go, oh boy, he's got me, and I'm, I break my structure. I can, bam, I can get hit. Hit him on the way up, maybe. Knee strike. And now, with his head and arm spin, I can either push his head through like I have been doing, or if we were uh, in a bus and could find space on an airplane, I want to control him, put him to the top of the pyramid, top of the triangle, control him in here, where now he's in a very bad spot. And I can, okay. So, that's number two. Number three is typical. The guy's already in on you and you, you screwed up already and you let him get in and you let him break your structure and he's starting to maybe throw you to the ground. So, try to stop it before he does throw you to the ground. So now the next time in frame is, oh boy, it's coming. Oh my God, I'm coming down. Boom, I can stop myself by making this frame with my arm and stepping out. The triangulation point for the, the throw, for him to take me to the ground, is somewhere about here, right? He's got to pull me through. So if I stay here, he's going to throw me. I don't have balance out control. Whoa. Okay? So I have to step out. So if he's coming on this side of the head, guys, you always step out here and make a frame. 
If it's the other side, you step your left foot out and make a frame the other side. So from here, the easiest way would be either to grab his going or his knees and break his structure. Don't try to lift him and counter wrestle. Keep your head up high in the face. So he comes in here, and man, I managed to get my base instinctively, but now he's starting to crank my head and make it hurt, and now he's starting to punch me. So if a guy punches you, I already have a video on this defense, you can tuck your chin in so he punches the top of my forehead instead with his rear knuckles, hopefully, instead of his, uh, my face. So I'm going to tuck in here, and I'm going to try to get bicep control. If he's really big and you can't, you can just hug it and try to trap that arm. But I'm going to get inside bicep control and decelerate these punches. It's hard to hear me when I'm down here. But I'm going to de de decelerate that. And now I'm going to grab this wrist and pull my head out and chuck my shoulder forward in the middle of his back. Okay? And I pull the wrist up with my head, coming up with a hammer lock, just like you should do on the ground. And then get the neck. One hand choke here. I can choke him out. I can hammer lock him here. Tap him out there. But what's most important is don't let him bend forward. I have to break his structure and keep him back. Now I can do that, you see, with just my right hand. And my, I also pressure on the throat and break him down this way. I can bump him with my pelvis and hips. I can, a huge guy, I can oblique kick him in the back of the knee. Now I did this once against a 300 pounder that had like five bouncers up on top of his shoulder, <laughs> like a football player, I think he was, in uh, uh, Rock Island, Illinois, when I was training at MFS back in the day. So I've used this one. You know, I've used this stuff quite a bit, and I've bounced for 12 years. Uh, again, here, we'll go to this angle behind us. I'm going to decelerate the punches, and I'm going to shove the shoulder forward. Try and get the shoulder. I'm going to shove the shoulder forward and come up the back tight here. And now I can walk this guy out and control him. Chill out, dude. Chill out, dude. Chill out. If i got to bring him down to the ground and choke him out, fine. Uh, the same technique also works on the ground. Um, come and how to get a hammer lock. So look at my hammer lock video, please, if you're more interested in grappling. Look at my hammer lock video. Let's say this guy is very strong in case he can me. He threw me to the ground. Oh boy, I messed up. And he threw me with the head and arm throw to the ground, which is case he can your scarf fold head and arm position. Now, maybe he doesn't let me throw him over. He knows his position well. He used to wrestle in high school. He's, he's got judo background, whatever. So what I'm going to try and do is shrug this out, grab my head, grab my head, and I, if I have trouble on a guy, a lot of times, what I'm going to do is, if you have tr uh, trouble getting out with other escapes, eventually on a really strong guy, I'll still get out. It takes a while, guys. But I look at my, my two case Gatami videos, okay, here, I can still put that shoulder in his back, and come up this way, and there's still hammer lock waiting to happen up there. Okay? So, this applies on the ground as well if you messed up and you let him throw it. So, I guess there's actually eight defenses. Anyway, or one apply standing on the ground. I mess up, I don't base out. Next one. I mess up, I don't base out. Super strong guy, boom, I kept over. I didn't spread my legs. He gets the throw. I do this all the time in grappling and in my Dino Juco fight in 2009, I often just uh, counter, counter take down, counter throw using momentum against him. Yes, yeah, so go for the throw. Here I grab the hip and I roll through. So this leads us to the next position on the ground when you're on top and the guy grabs a headlock, which is going to happen in grappling against noobs all the time. Uh, a lot of skinnier guys hate this when a big guy just grabs them and holds them. Now, on a street, number one, what I'm going to do is, is stop the roll through with my base here. Okay. Stop the roll through with my base, number one. Number two, you always bring the knees up and sit your butt down on your heels. And now on the street, I'm going to do the bow and arrow technique. Lift this knee up, put it in the back, middle of his back, reap him out, and do whatever I got to do from there. I have a video on that from uh, years ago. So, technique is, number one, don't get rolled through, settle your weight back down, grab this, and lift this knee, and put it in a spine to hyperextend his shoulder blade arrow and spread him out bow and arrow style. Okay? So this is my street defense because it's faster in case there's multiple opponents. So this is the one I like to go to. After this is the uh, kind of more jujitsu, judo, says Gracie Jiu Jitsu defense. Now for the Gracie Jiu Jitsu defense, uh, very important to know for in, in the grappling uh, dojo, jujitsu dojo setting, this one of you guys will use a lot. 
when he's got this headlock, again, number one, always stop the base. If your hand's not free, you can use your forehead. Don't let him, by the way, if he's starting to pull you past 90 degrees, you're in trouble. Keep him at 90 or even better yet, drag him back with your knees and your body weight going back in your heels to 70 degrees. Now I'm in a much better place to cement him and make sure I don't get rolled through and have issues. So he's got me, he's trying to roll me through, I stop him, I bring the knees up to the back, I spread them, I get settled back down here. Now, now uh, for this defense, you can put the heel in the gut, which it gets a better grappler, in my opinion, it's better. For the streets, maybe you don't want it. People go, well, why? I had a video on it and I didn't put the heel on the guy. Oh, you're doing it wrong. No, I'm not doing it wrong. I have a reason I don't do it the Gracie Combatives way. In my opinion, by putting the heel in the gut, this guy could end up just hugging this for dear life when he sees his buddy coming with a bottle and I'm getting kicked in the back of the head and getting, whoo! This big, say it's the big guy, pretend it's me headlocking him. You know, whatever. He's squeezing your neck and you don't like it. Maybe you want to do a def different defense. He does it all the time, but now he's hit to the armbar game. So maybe like you're doing it to the same guy. And uh, he, he sucks his in and gets out of your armbars. Because he knows what you do now. And he's just that guy who's annoying and he always squeezing your head in class. Uh, so maybe try a different move. So while he's doing this, yeah, again, everything applies. You got your base, knees wide, butt low. I'm going to go to the face and push it down. I'm going to bring my right knee up, my bottom knee more towards the center of his back to balance. Bring the top knee up, scrape his face like I would for a neck scissor. And the head's gonna come up, and I'm also gonna tense out like Wing Chun Kung Fu this wrist to try, and boom, turn that into a double wrist lock here. Pinching his head, I got my double wrist lock position, and I'm gonna crank it banana towards the back of the head. Always go small banana in my opinion, little curve, half moon towards the back of the head. There's my double wrist lock, I'm in a good pinch position. Anytime the guy's on his side, just don't let him block it and get in front of the hip and then turn in on a single, that's the problem. So you gotta boom yank it out this way. So again, here, face, bring the bottom knee up to the middle of the back, push the face, scrape the face with the knee, bring this one up, turn it into the double wrist lock, and Take it there. Of course, you can switch into a straight arm bar. You could eventually go to, a, if he got his hands together, into a uh, bicep slicer, uh, short arm scissors. There's a lot of stuff you can follow. I can go into a pin it to my chest and do a wrist lock, a goose my wrist lock, uh, go this way, and then go arm bar. So you can do a lot. But that's a fun one. Um, uh, I think you guys will have fun doing that one as well. And uh, you can even play with his head, uh, neck scissor style, with your knees on, a, on his face and neck, possibly, depending on where he is. Maybe you can submit him with a neck crank with your knees uh, in that position as well. So, has a lot of defenses to the headlock. Don't let anyone mess you up with the headlock. They had an arm throw over again. Practice defeating it through different stages and in different positions. And uh, hopefully no one can keep you there anymore. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm Dan the Wolfman, and I'll catch you on the flip side.